Hello and welcome to part number three of this series on Airtable for social media managers. Now in part number one, I shared with you how to organize all of the information we get from clients as we are onboarding them and bringing them onto our client roster. And in part number two, I showed you how to plan content calendars, create content calendars, and collaborate with your clients on their upcoming social media posts. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Airtable to receive content submissions from clients, how to organize all of that information so that you don't get lost into the mix, and how to streamline it so that clients have one place to go when it comes to sending content your way. Now, for those of you who are new, hello, my name is Andrea Jones. I am a social media strategist, and I am so committed to helping you keep things easy and fun and simple. And if you're looking for some shifts to make in your social media business, I encourage you to download the Business Building Blueprint for Social Media Managers. It'll help guide you into making a business that works for you, that works for your lifestyle uh, and works with your um, ideal setup and boundaries and all of those wonderful things. So check it out by going to onlinedrea.com slash blueprint. All right, let's dive into this tutorial. All right, so here's how I... I streamline my client's content submission. And this strategy was born from having to dig through emails to find where the heck anything is. So if you relate to this, I think you'll like this process. So what I've done inside of Airtable here is I've actually created a form that is in that client's base. Okay, so it's in their Airtable base, but it's a form. So I'll show you what the final product looks like in a minute, but I want to show you how I have the form set up. So I just have something here. You can, you know, write whatever you want, but I put social media content submission form. I put a little bit of details and I gave them a reminder of my boundaries. So, uh, you know, they need to send it within seven days of the date that they want it posted. Um, the client's name, describe what they want the post to be, uh, the po post publish date, and then any images that they need to attach as well. And so I also have this connected as a spreadsheet. So like I mentioned in future video or in past videos of this series, uh, Airtable is like a fancy spreadsheet. So if I actually click on grid view, it'll pull up this in a spreadsheet format. So you can see their name, the notes, the attachments, the date when it's published. And then I also added two additional things that aren't on the form. So the status of the post, so I can keep track of it, and then the date it was actually scheduled or scheduled to be published. Okay, so when you're looking back at this form here, you can actually click this link here and copy it, and it'll um, show just the client what the form looks like. So I'm going to click this open into a new tab so that you guys can see what the final form looks like for the clients. So this is all they see. They see the title up here, they see this information, and they just click submit. They don't see anything else. So it's not confusing for the client. So as I'm working with the clients, I'll send them this link and so that they have it ready and available to them when they're submitting content. I'll show you what this looks like with a client as well. So I'm going to click on over to client. And right now I am in the view of the um, spreadsheet, but I want to click open a post as an example. So let's take this post here. I'm going to click it open. And you can see here that um, I've got the post topic. I changed the name to the post topic. Um, so you can change whatever you want. But for this client, it made more sense. I have the notes that the client added in here, what the event is. Um, looks like it was copied and pasted from somewhere. The attachments that they wanted posted with it. And then we added in, uh, or they added in what date they needed it posted by, and then the different um, statuses. So once we received it, we put it as in submitted. And then when we're working on those posts, we mark it as in progress. Um, I added in canceled for this client as well, because one of the things she had submitted actually ended up being a canceled event due to COVID-19. So for that status kind of thing, we have the information saved, but it's not uh, going to be posted. Okay. So the beauty about this is that now I have a history of these posts. So if a client goes, Hey, I sent you something 
when was it posted? I can go here and go, oh, you sent it to me on this day. It's going to be posted on this day. And so it helps keep things organized and streamlined for the clients, uh, as well as for myself, uh, especially if you have a client who submits a lot of content. Um, this could be the best way to uh, kind of organize all of the things that they're sending in to keep both of you on the same page. And there you have it. Make sure you stay tuned for part four of this series series because I'm going to show you how I organize the hashtag research that I do for my clients so that everything's in one easy to resource spot. Uh, Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification because that video is coming out soon. I'll see you then. Bye for now.